Oh, apparently the school is on lockdown because somebody found offensive graffiti in a bathroom right now. Um, One of the high schools here was, I think, closed yesterday. And then one of the other ones over a report of a threat. And then Crater High School in Central Point today did not go on to lockdown, but they are on high alert and have a bunch of cops just doing patrols around campus because of a threat that was reported. They were talking about taking uh, bathroom passes away from the middle schoolers or like giving them 20 a quarter or something like that because, (laughs) well, because idiot TikTokers are trying to, you know, thrash bathrooms like they see in the TikTok challenges and shit like that. So, Well, I thought that was just like a month at a time of stupid Well, that's what I thought too, but you know, well, it could, I mean, maybe it was and the school district's just as slow to act because that wasn't that like October? Yeah, I thought so. And then like November was punch a teacher day or something and then I don't know what this month is. Yeah. I mean, because middle schoolers can't come up with enough nonsense on their own. Mm-hmm. Makes bringing kitty corpses to school kind of benign. That was high school. Oh, uh, whatever. Katie was the one who brought dead things to middle school. Yeah, I brought the raccoon corpse <laughs> to middle school. I mean, I don't know if it even counts as a corpse at that point. Like, it was recognizable, but it had been run over a lot. Uh, okay. I never saw it, so. Well, it was in a bag. <laughs> I put it in a bag and told one of my friends in the bathroom, hey, open this bag that don't scream. Why would you open the bag? <laughs> so it wasn't like seen in them bringing one into Safeway where it looked like it was alive. And then smacking it so it's bloodshot all over the grocery store. <laughs> the freezer aisle. <laughs> ah, good times. <laughs> Mel's just horrified. <laughs> wow. <laughs> It's a Booze and Spirits podcast. Yay! It's like a drink with death. We always start episodes right after someone finds out that their kid went to school with a kid who has COVID. You know, <laughs> That's our a, tradition. And a place where there's like six kids at a time. <sighs> hey everyone, I'm Nick McDonald. I'm Kate McDonald. And I'm Mel. I'm, I'm here. Mel. Mel's Hi, here. Mel. Guys, Mel's here. I have nothing to add about children being in daycare. You're you welcome. Don't, <laughs> you don't think they should stay there? Like, that's where they belong. That's where they belong. His daycare is fabulous, but. Well, I mean, it doesn't sound like it's the daycare fault here. Yeah, no, it's definitely not her fault. She's got to stand firmly behind people in Southern Oregon. Uh, should probably believe science is real. And that COVID is not fake. But here we are, so. What has science ever done for anybody other than, you know, the entire agricultural revolution and their entire way of being keeping them alive this long mm-hmm. through you know <laughs> childbirth and common colds right <laughs> keeping polio away from them you know <laughs> polio you mean like hitting balls from the back of a horse <laughs> you said that and i was just thinking like right yep <laughs> and i was trying to figure out how he was Fucking a whore. I, I'm really tired. <laughs> wow. That had to have been an impressive mental image. Southern Oregon stump training. Come on now. Stump training? Your roots. Stump training, yeah. Where you train them to back up next to a stump so you can stand on top of the stump. Uh, oh. oh. Why do yeah. you know so oh. much about this? I'm from the same place you guys are. <laughs> yeah, and we both missed this memo. Maybe that was that in the boys section of sexual education in school uh, when they separate <laughs> us into rooms to talk about our changing bodies. They talk <laughs> boys about stump training horses. I don't know. Maybe I hung out with more rednecks than you guys did. I don't know. <laughs> I'd like to state for the record, I am not from here. That's fair. I live here. That's right. And my sex ed classes were in middle school, which is before I got here. <laughs> so there was no stump training involved. There was not, but... Um, I feel like maybe I learned that from the 4-H kids more so than a uh, health class. <laughs> <laughs> or just the looking glass kids in general. Yeah, well, six of one. Wow, this took a turn. <laughs> Shocker. Kids with COVID, say- stump training... <laughs> Yeah, you know, we like to cover our bases. We're we're multiverse. We're in a multiverse. Yep, like Marvel movies. 
I just realized all you're going to hear on the recording is me popping my toes nervously because apparently that's my uh, twitch of the day. Ooh. What's hammer toes? How does that correspond to that? I forget what hammer toes are. That's no, that's like okay. I think that's like kind of like your feet are misshapen. I think. Oh, uh, so like you don't have like ends of your toes? They just like knuckle up there or something? I guess I don't know. Okay, I get to have foot surgery soon, but I have to take a week off work, so I'm not sure when I'm doing it. Why are you having foot surgery? Um, I have. I think it's called an Edison's bunion. So it's like a bunion, but it's on the pinky toe side and like a bone spur underneath. So, you know, walking sucks. Mm. And mm. it likes to kill elephants with electricity. Is that why it's an Edison's? You and I did not go to the same school, apparently. Because I, <laughs> I missed guess. that, too. And now we add elephant murder to the list. Edison was trying to prove that alternate current was inferior to direct current. So he used alternate current to electrify an elephant. How big of a stump do you need for an elephant? <laughs> I guess that depends on the elephant. Eh? <laughs> Could you just get one of those like logger belts where you just like. <laughs> Plop it up and then climb yeah, a little yeah. and then plop it up and then climb a little. Well, you also need like boot spurs for that, though. So that I don't know if the elephant's going to be into that. I mean, they got thick hide, but still. Well, and then the problem becomes like to use that belt, you have to be straddling the tree. So then you got to turn the other way or mm-hmm. else the tree is in the way. It it sounds like a logistical nightmare, really. Yeah. Is it worth it? I don't know. Uh, my, my French Canadian lumberjacking skills are... Uh... Possibly at an all-time low right now. Oh, so. yeah, that's a shame. You should really <laughs> get to work on that. Um, I, when I was in Africa, and we walked the elephants. They got massive elephant boners. I guess that's really yeah. good. Perverts. Elephant perverts. <laughs> elephant penises are prehensile. Did it try to mount you? No. It just was excited. You can fit, like, six grown adults in a whale's vagina. Fun fact of the day. <laughs> Oh shit, I forgot to turn off my phone. I need to turn off my heater. Let's make a noise. You guys need to turn me off with all this whale vagina talk. <laughs> San really, Diego. Uh, <laughs> a vagina wide enough to take six humans is doing it for you? I was going to say it's cozy, but that does not sound cozy. It's spacious. <laughs> it's like an SUV. Aye, aye, aye. All right, what the hell are we talking about today? Mm. Whales don't die of old age, they drown. Like, well, why do you want me to cry? <laughs> Sorry. Do they drown? I knew it was a horrible thing to say, but... <laughs> Wait, I need to know more about this. Do they drown because they can no longer swim because they're so old? Yeah, exactly. Well, they can't make it to the surface. sort of dying of old age. Like, <laughs> the root cause is age. I assume. I don't know. I've not drowned many whales. Today. Geriatric whales. It's only drowned the baby whales. <laughs> I really upset somebody the other day because they didn't know that orcas were a dolphin species, not actually a whale. Oh. So it's just like ruined their life, I feel like. Really? Why was that? So That's weird. I don't know. <laughs> Mel considers it a victory. So. <laughs> Checking on fence for tomorrow? What? Oh, I don't. I, I have to stop. Okay. I'm stopping. <laughs> I'm stopping. <laughs> I'm engaged in what we're doing. I was not going to ask a question about the size of a baby whale's vagina. (laughs) Moving on. That'll get you arrested. Uh Right? That's why I was not going to do it. (laughs) So as you can probably tell by our conversation so far, we decided we were going to do Jewish ghosts in our Hanukkah. Yes. (laughs) Sometimes I have no words. (laughs) <laughs> and let's just be clear, these are Jewish ghosts in general, not necessarily Hanukkah ghosts. Yeah, no, like... Well, I couldn't find a ghost that was just going balls out for eight nights, like... <laughs> <laughs> I tried. But you would think that that would be a thing, right? Well, and, like, I also... It's hard to find just, like, Christmas hauntings. So there's just not a lot of holiday-specific hauntings, except so Halloween. my So my... My story about the haunted lantern that stayed lit for eight nights, that's not acceptable for our ghost story? Is that what you're trying to tell me? No, I'm just saying there's not a lot of oh, okay. those. Was it a ghost that kept it on? Did the oil just last that long? Possibly. Kicking it old school? That's right. 
Sean told me that I the story of Passover was almost a ghost story because there's just a lot of killing in it. And I was like, I don't know that that's helpful. I think our audience is aware by now that, that we're not good at this. No, our, when we pick a theme in air quotes, that that is only a extremely loose guideline. <laughs> and we will loose. manipulate the meaning of that as it suits our needs. It's more fun that way. Exactly. Keeps you on your toes. Uh-huh. And it, uh, you know, shortens our research process. <laughs> Allows for a lot of slop in the research. I mean, my research is slop as it is today, so... Uh. <laughs> My apologies. Well, and it took a long time to reach slop. Let's be serious about that. <laughs> well, and like, I'm just disappointed. Like, I'm the one that lives with the Jew. Like, nothing. I found nothing. <laughs> it just sounds so horrible when you say it like that. I have to live with the Jew. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I have to live with him. I don't think. Okay, I, thought I, I thought I said I, I'm the one that lives with the Jew. Maybe yeah, well, I said yeah, I have I know, to live with It's just, you know, the way it sounds. Yeah. My baby's not Jewish, though, because I'm not You're a not, Jew. Yeah. But he is genetically Jewish, so. The end. Half a Jew in the baby is better than one in the bush, or two in the bush? Or... <laughs> two Jews in the bush? Or two babies in the bush? Neither one sounds, I don't know, are they hiding? What's happening? <laughs> are they spying on me? Because I They're re- hiding from the spooky ghosts. Mm, well, who wants to go first? I mean, I can, unless someone else wants to. What the hell's going on? I tried I tried to open my notes, and instead it went to Pandora? I don't get that. You're just going to sing us a song? I am. I like to sing uh, about the moon and the juna and the springer. Rather than a story, I just have uh, seven covers of Hava Nagila. That's what <laughs> Just the Adam Sandler Hanukkah song? <laughs> That's right. I'll either go first or last, because mine isn't really a story. Mine isn't really a Rut row. Oh, well, then should I go in the middle then? Like, Sure. I've, I, I've got a story. <laughs> sure. All right. So uh, th- this is pretty much just like Jewish spiritualism, mysticism 101-ish. Uh, like because, Madonna does. Yes. All right. Uh, so, so, you know, like any other religion, Judaism is doesn't just go down one path. Uh, There's lots of different interpretations and things that happen over the years, and this is just sort of a conglomeration of all of it. So this is the Jewish Guide to Dealing with Demons. The Talmud, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, which is the most significant collection of Jewish oral traditions interpreting the Torah. Each and every one of us has a thousand demons on our left and ten thousand demons on our right. Like Jay Z said. Yes. Jay Z, the poster child of Judaism. The black Troy Aiken. Yes. I don't know what that means, and hopefully <laughs> it doesn't actually mean anything, because now I feel weird. <laughs> so. Demons can cause weak knees to contaminated drinking water, and some have even been known to attack a person's self-esteem. So it's, this sounds like the evil eye. Yes. And it gives you extremely sarcastic and hurtful comments. That just sounds like my anxiety. Well, maybe it's a demon, because you you got 10,000 of them just on your right-hand side. Fuck. Right? That's a lot of demons to fight. (laughs) And you shake them all about. You do the hokey pokey and you do do with your demon crew. That's what it's all about. I don't know. We I tried. <laughs> so for the Jewish faith, the Torah emphasizes immediate concrete physical rewards and punishment for good and bad deeds on earth. It's not about some abstract afterlife, but there is some... No, no, we get to business around here. Yeah. There is some mention of the afterlife. The Talmud states that all Israelites have a share in the spiritual afterlife, referred to as Olam Haba, or the world to come. Not all shares are equal. A particularly righteous person will have a greater share than the average person, and a person can lose all shares through wicked actions. This sounds like a spiritual timeshare to me. Yes. <laughs> but you have to... You have to do nice things for people to get the good spots during the summer months. Okay. Yeah. Only truly righteous souls ascend directly to Gan Eden, 
or the Garden of Eden, not at all associated with the Christian Garden of Eden. But the average person descends at death to a place of punishment and or purification, depending on your interpretation, to Gehinom or Gehina in Yiddish. Gehinom is a place of torture, punishment, fire, and brimstone, as some see it. Others see it as a less harsh place where one reviews his or her actions in life and repents for misdeeds. Like Reddit. Yeah. Okay. I'm following. So, uh, usually you do this punishment for about 12 months, and then you can ascend to Gan Eden. But the particularly wicked are simply destroyed at death, ceasing to exist, while others believe in internal damnation. So, the person, when they die, is supposed to go to one of these places. But sometimes things just go wrong. (laughs) I also like that that has the scientific view of death, that it's just someone turns out the lights. If that happens, that's on you. That's your fault. Like, (laughs) Yeah. I prefer it's nobody's fault. It just is what it is. But, you know, that's just me. Anyway, so if, if a soul doesn't go to its purgatory or final resting place and it stays here on Earth, it can take one of two general forms. An Iber is a good spirit which can inhabit the body of another person for a period of time as an additional soul. The purpose is often to help in a matter of this world or to finish some good act of unfinished business, and then it continues about its business and leaves the person alone. A malevolent spirit or a diebuck understood to be the lower soul of someone who had done something so unspeakable that this level of soul could not even enter Gehenna for purification, but was condemned to wander out of the body. It also has the ability to possess a human, and the end of the story was seldom good. There are even Jewish, uh, what do you call that, where you make the demon go away? Exorcism. Exorcism, that's what it is. There are Jewish exorcisms, and Apparently, sometimes Jewish exorcisms don't work, even though there really aren't records in the Catholic Church saying any exorcism didn't ever work. Interesting. Yeah, but there's also a lot of non-official Catholic records that talk about exorcisms failing, <laughs> so... Yeah, but they're non-official. Yeah, well, I know. That's exactly <laughs> where my point was. Yeah. I think it was mine, too. I just wasn't articulating it very well. No, no, no I got it. <laughs> So, if you are feeling like you are suffering because of a demon in your life, there are some things that you can do. Um, Buy when some you're out- dot com merch. Yes. Was that it's a it? good deed that then helps somebody else <laughs> and it makes the demon say, ah, and then it, you, you can't see me, but I'm making the, the pointy finger. She is. I, I'll confirm that. Yeah. And then... And I'm hissing like a something, like a cat or something. Or like a vampire. Oh. Or like a vampire. <laughs> Booze so, and Spirits merch is guaranteed to save your soul. Uh, not an actual guarantee. Or results may vary, or based on your... If you just blink out of existence, it's your own damn fault. Okay, I'm fair with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I love this. When you're outside and you think you're being harassed by a demon, the recommendation is to practice physical distancing, Leave at least four (laughs) cubits of space around yourself and others to avoid making the demon feel trapped and panicky. What's a cubit? Is that is that the breadth of the hand? I forget which one that is. Oh, I haven't a clue. I I thought it was like a foot, like a square foot or a cube foot. But I could be no, because that's some old timey biblical measurement. I think it's the width of your hand, but I could be wrong. I think that's measuring a horse. Because Noah's Ark was like supposed to be 300 cubits by 600 cubits or something like that. That's not a very big arc. It doesn't seem like it, no. But you got to remember that, you know, they didn't <laughs> discover several thousand animals till after his time. <laughs> oh, he only had to save the ones that were regional. Got it. Yes. yes. The ones he knew about. Yeah, the and unicorns then, and- from across the pond got hosed. They're still the national animal of Scotland, though. Fuck yes. Is that a true story? Because that's the coolest shit ever. It is a true, true story. True story. God damn. Kel found that out recently. He goes, well, that's the most Scottish thing I've ever read. Why am I not more Scottish? <laughs> we can't all be lucky. I guess. 
Anyway, so the really interesting demon expulsion is to burn a cat placenta, which immediately comes with a warning that says, incredibly dangerous, do not attempt. But the Talmud (laughs) provides a step-by-step process for how you actually see demons around you um, and how to burn a cat placenta. Do they tell you how to get a cat placenta? Ask your neighbor. I am. (laughs) Is there a pamphlet? Because, like, all this information needs to be on a t-shirt about how to see demons and then scare them off by burning cat placenta. Because- uh, I'll have to scroll through my Google history, but yes, <laughs> there there is a how-to guide. I will um, wander the streets downtown and <laughs> how to see demons and scare them away with cat placenta. Well, and it pamphlets. can't be just any cat placenta. Um, you're supposed to ask your neighborhood cats if any of them are firstborn female black cat born to another firstborn female black cat. That's really hard to find. Yeah, I was going to say, that's pretty specific. But you can apparently use catancestry.com to help you determine this. Is that real? I haven't, I didn't okay. check. <laughs> I like, are she just fucking with us? Or is this a thing? I mean, I wouldn't doubt it. That's why I asked. Like, well, and and then not you have to ask the cat if it happens to have a placenta on hand, uh, <laughs> in its cupboards, grind it in a mortar and pestle. Like I mean, I'm pretty confident cats eat their placenta after they ex- ex- oh, labor their babies. A, They're not. What if they had a them. really big litter and they didn't finish it? Like they saved it for later, like a doggy bag from Olive Garden. I hope it's in Tupperware, though, because I feel like that could get kind of (laughs) funky real quick. Well, if you save your placenta as a as a a human, they have you put it in a cooler, and the midwife comes and gets it like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, here's here's the best part. You're gonna there's something grind it. You're gonna (laughs) burn it in a fire and grind it to a fine ash. And, and you are going to put it in your eyes to see the demons. Ah, yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay. Here's here's what I'm thinking. Okay. <laughs> now this may not be in the spirit of the thing, but here's the shortcut I'm thinking. A lot of times they put ash into um, glass blowers. Will put ash into things they create. Mm-hmm. So. Could we track down some firstborn black cat of a firstborn black cat placenta, burn it down, and put it into some glasses and have like demon vision glasses? Like, oh, oh yeah. See, see, well, I do. I mean, on Supernatural, they just created holy fire and put the glasses in holy fire but this actually sounds this sounds way more legit ground way more legit (laughs) yeah i'm not even sure how one makes holy fire unless like you're listening to ronnie james dio albums like (laughs) (laughs) um the the way more benign way to get rid of a demon is i know um, you just keep saying its name and taking the letters away from the back. So if it's Kaylee, K A Y L E I G H, it's Kaylee and then Kale and then K. Or yes, you are correct. If it's Bingo, it's Bingo and then Bing and then Bin and then Bye and then B and then Gone. That sounds like a really easy way to get rid of demons. That does. It does. I I feel like that's a cheat code. I might have to look through that demon dictionary. I'm pretty sure some of them have like 20-some letter words or names, so that might get a little... uh... Well, I actually expected both of you to call bullshit on it, so the fact that you're not is interesting. I don't know it's bullshit. Well, that's good. (laughs) Here's the thing about magic and spells is that the more you believe it works, the better chance it has to work. So you might as well believe in it. Like, <laughs> it's in That's, your benefit to yeah. believe in it. <laughs> All right. Now, so is is that... That is that? Cause, that is because the- <laughs> my story is, is all about spirit possessions and and being exercised away. So this is oh, a nice little dovetail here going there on. There you go. So this, so this is a story. Um, this is actually a pretty old one. It's a story of a possession from the 16th century. And it's a story of an evil spirit that had entered the body of a young man. 
Thereupon, the people adjured him to reveal the name of either himself or his wife, which he didn't. But when they mentioned his wife, he began to scream and said that his wife was Aguna. I believe his pronunciation. There's a lot of Yiddish words in here. I'm going to fuck up. His wife was Aguna, which means that she had no right to marry. He lost his life at sea, and the sages could not give her permission to remarry, and that he had requested from the sages to give her permission to marry again, and had given them many indications that he had been lost at sea, but they did not know where his home had been, and therefore said that he could not give her permission. So he was crying because she had become a harlot by reason of the fact that she could not obtain permission to marry from the sages. So, you're talking about going back and trying to fix some things. This was an evil spirit, but he was still trying to fix this thing that his wife ended up being branded a harlot because she remarried without getting official permission. Aw, that's sweet. Yeah. Well, I mean, he was trying to fix it, right? Yeah. The sages asked him why he could not rest in peace and what sin he had committed, to which he replied that he had committed adultery. When the sages asked him for the name of the woman with whom he had sinned, he refused to tell, as she had been dead for a long time and would do no one any good if he told. So, you know, he's keeping it real. He's keeping a hush-hush. I am in the position, he said, of the man about whom the sages say that he who is guilty of adultery should have the four kinds of capital punishment inflicted upon him. And there are added, four kinds of capital punishment? Uh-huh. I- I'll go and get into that in a minute. Okay. And he added that for him, this had not been abrogated, which I had to look up as a word that means like excused, because I didn't know what abrogated means. And while they were talking, the young man suddenly rose up and stood on his feet. The sages asked him, why have you risen up? And the youth replied, because the great sage is coming in. And as they looked around, the sage entered, as the young man had said, and a company of young men followed him into the house to hear what was going on. Then the evil spirit said, why have you come to see me? There are among you some who have done the same as I and will suffer a similar fate. The youths became terribly frightened. Then the evil spirit said, Why are you so astounded? That youth yonder, who is standing among you dressed in white clothes, has committed sodomy, which is as bad as adultery. The youths became terrified and looked at one another. Thereupon the young man dressed in white clothes began screaming and said, It is, alas, true, I am guilty. And another young man also confessed the same crime. Then one of the sages asked, How did you know that they were guilty of such a sin? And the evil spirit began to laugh and said, It is written, and in the hand of every man is a seal, meaning that every man has written on his hand what deeds he has done. And they asked him, How can you see their deeds? His anus deeds. (laughs) (laughs) With the utes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> With the, the two Utes, the two Utes did some <laughs> anus deeds, got it all over their hands. <laughs> That's where they went wrong. <laughs> they asked him, how can you see their hands, which are covered by their cloaks? And the evil spirit again laughed and said, I can see everywhere. <laughs> then they asked him how he had come to be in this young man. And the spirit replied that he had no rest in the water as the fish ate his body. Then his soul departed from him and entered a cow. And the cow became insane and the genteel owner sold it to a Jew who killed it. And as the youth was standing nearby, he flew straight into him. Thereupon the sages exercised him and left the youth and flew away. That's it? Well, well, that covers a lot of the bases that you were talking about. Like, it, <laughs> no, it totally it's does. jumping into people. You know, they exercised it. I mean, and for them, the exercise is just get them out of that person. It wasn't like send them screaming back to hell or anything like that because, you know, yeah. it's Jewish, so the, there is no hell. So the four capital punishments are interesting um, because it's an allusion to a passage from the Talmud. In the uh, Sanhedrin, which although the Sanhedrin was abolished, the law of four modes of execution has not been abolished. He who is deserving of stoning either falls from the roof or is torn to pieces by a wild beast. Who is deserving of burning either falls into the fire or is bitten by a serpent. Who is, he who is deserving of decapitation is either delivered to the genteel government or brigands attack him. And he who is deserving of strangulation is either drowned in a river or dies of suffocation. In other words, the Talmud relates drowning to the category of death by strangulation, indicating that the manner of dying can fall to the lot of a person as punishment for adultery with a married woman. So it's kind of like this illusion that this was the death he had coming to him for committing adultery. 
And he had to suffer all four of them? No, no, he only suffered the drowning. It was just, that was the one of the four. Oh, he, one of the four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's because that was the appropriate crime for adultery was, and it didn't really, the article I found really didn't state what the cause of punishment for the other capital punishments was. But yeah, for adultery, was- it was drowning. I was just hoping, like, it went to a cow, it went to a chicken, <laughs> it went to a sparrow that, you know. Well, and and there's, and it, it I didn't take notes on this part. Uh, there is a part that talked about the restless spirit jumping around from animals to animals was a, a common thing in Hebrew literature from the Talmud era where, you know, like a, a spirit would like jump into a follow deer or something. And, but because the, the follow deer is not meant to hold a human spirit, it would slowly injure and drive the animal insane and then it would jump out of that spirit and go or that animal and go find another one and keep jumping around until it found something that it could uh, perform its cause with could it could it perform its cause in like great apes are they close enough the thumbs i don't know it's a good question good question i am not a hebrew scholar as uh, shocker I'm, I'm sorry to disappoint you all but it is interesting. Interesting question. We should go to, I don't know, Greenwich Village or somewhere and find, you know, a pack of roaming Hasidics and ask if they have any thoughts on it. Are they allowed to talk <laughs> to women? You know, there's a lot of weird rules there. They might not be allowed to talk. The married ones might not. They might not. Or, I know. Or, or, I know they can. Or it might be a thing like where, like, they have to, you know, reach a certain rank before they're allowed to give advice to women. I'm not entirely sure. I know, like, they are one of the groups that can't touch when they're dating or engaged. Like, yeah. like at all. <laughs> they give each other, like, air high fives. What happens if you, like, accidentally brush up against somebody? Like, oh, sorry about uh, that. You have to go do some prayers and pay a penance. Until you righted that wrong, I would assume. I would assume there's, yeah. A lot of penance has to do with fasting, and I'm not into that. (laughs) I consider most penance to be like self-flagellation, but I think you and I have very different mindsets. (laughs) (laughs) I would be better at doing that than fasting. (laughs) I say as I stare at a box of this stupid fucking stomach test I have to take that involves fasting. So I just keep putting it off and putting it off. You gotta get the timing right. Yeah. Ramsey's been complaining the past couple days about his stomach hurting, but he's also been trying very hard to get out of school at every opportunity, so it's kind of hard to take him seriously. Well, just remember, Mom and Dad always thought I was just trying to get come home from school, and then they found out I'd had mono for like six weeks. I asked him, I said, is it worth me taking you to the doctor for? And he said no. I said, okay, then you can go to school. <laughs> Maybe he just needs to poop. Ramsey had an x-ray a couple years ago, and his lower intestine was just jam-packed, backed up. Oh, crap. Literally. Yeah, and Literally. Apparently, this is pretty, apparently this is pretty common with a lot of, like, younger people, like mm-hmm. teenagers and kids. And part of it is they're just not getting enough water and fiber in their diet. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, he's he's got laxatives that he takes semi-regularly. He could take them more, but... And the doctor said, you know, it's going to be like at least a year of him taking these laxatives to get all that cleaned out and for his intestine to shrink back down to the right size. Oh my gosh, wow. Yeah. I really thought it was a one and done kind of thing. Not when you've got 30 feet of it backed up in there or whatever. (laughs) They uh, gave me gas X for my mystery stomach issues. That didn't help. They've given me all the things. I feel like the only way I can describe the pain was when I was, like, pregnant and my child was literally just jammed in my rib cage, and there was no comfortable position because I have such a tiny torso. Did you take a pregnancy test? Yes. Okay. It would have to be a bit farther along for it to be jammed into my rib cage then. I don't know. There's all sorts of, I didn't know I was pregnant. Like, that show went on for years, so there apparently was plenty of cases. I know, and I worked with a girl that swears she was one of those. Like, she didn't know she was pregnant <laughs> until she was in labor. Just the weirdest st- Like, I can't imagine that. <laughs> pregnant women look so miserable for months. <laughs> like, how do you not know? Plus, it moves around. They're supposed to. But, I mean, like, I, I feel my ovulation, so maybe I'm just way more sensitive than other people. I don't fucking know. Oh, yeah. I I never have any idea when that shit's coming. And yet other people are like, blah, blah, blah. I'm ovulating right now. And I'm like, congratulations. Well, I'm a boy. It's just not a problem. I mean, I assume my period's starting this weekend because I had cotton mouth for two days for no reason. I don't know how those are connected, but you're all welcome. Fun facts. 
Ramsey's full of poop. I get caught in mouth before my period. <laughs> Whales' vaginas are large. There's so many t-shirts coming out of this episode. Fun <laughs> facts for everyone. That's mm-hmm. right. Okay, because um, my ADHD brain doesn't make me a good listener very often. I found a ghost story. Hey. While, while this was all happening. All right. Seriously? Yeah. Is it the one I just told because you weren't listening, so you just do the same one? I don't know what you're talking about. You just told a story? <laughs> so I'm not going to have magical tons of information on this, but that's fine. I found a haunted synagogue. Ooh. There's actually more than one, but this was the only one that I actually got some like good info on. So in Amherst, New York, there is a haunted synagogue. Actually, when I found it. it would be Amherst. And then Googled it more. Apparently, Spook Eats has been there. Shocker. Just Amherst and Haunted Synagogue just sounds like a ghost. Just goes together. Doesn't it? doesn't it sound like that? Um, yes. So it's a highly active site. It's on Fronkhauser Road. Fronkhauser Road. Fronkhauser. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> the backstory is that this property was once used as a dumping ground by a child serial killer. Wow! How did you uh, be? Able, how did you get past that part of the story? I'm assuming they killed children, not that they were a child. All right, I'm talking. So, uh, so there is. Oh, this is a great typo. There's reports of a male. It's a spurt. A male spurt. <laughs> Short for expert. Male spirit. Oh, okay. carrying an axe and uh, children spirits moving about the property and the woods around it. Running and screaming from a guy with an axe. That's a hard property sell right there. Another story surrounding the site is that during the construction of the synagogue, a wall collapsed, killing three workers. Jesus. There, um... Or not. This group that yeah. has, uh, has investigated, it looks like, five times it does notice an increase in activity when they use the workers' names. There hmm. also may or may not have been an, a Native American burial site there. Wow. Bad shit attracts bad shit. That is a trifecta of bad shit. So this uh, specific ghost hunting organization has collected EVPs and witnessed a black shadow figure move from the woods and disappear near the building. And they've gotten some ecto pictures. (laughs) Ecto pictures? Yeah, I don't know what that is exactly. I don't either. I'll see if I can find it on their website, but their website looks kind of like the 90s. So I promise nothing. Oh my god, are they is their website an Angel Fire site? It's, that's like the best that's like the best ghost hunting site. Um so. no, but this other one I pulled up that I couldn't read on my phone from the Paranormal <laughs> and Ghost Society. Powered by MySpace. Does look like it's Angel Fire. I don't know, I was gonna check it really quick to see if <laughs> Does it have lots of rotating gifts so like <laughs> Um Yes. Netscape. <laughs> I will, uh, I didn't read it, but there are some photos and EVPs here, because this website is terrible to read. Um, yeah. It looks like a few investigation groups have exited the building in, in quite a tizzy because of the child apparitions, which is fair. Those are kind of the scarier ghosts, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Nobody likes that. Children don't have fully formed frontal lobes. So you can't trust them. They do not. Mm-mm. I'm in an abusive relationship with my toddler, so I understand. <laughs> <laughs> he, That's a pretty good way to describe he that. He beats yeah. the hell out of me. <laughs> but then I'll like I hadn't considered it, grab yeah. my face and love me. Not want anyone else. <laughs> You're his blood doll. <laughs> this website doesn't seem to have a bunch of great information, but they do have some photos. So, I'll send this to you so you can link photos or yeah. and see the skull graphic at the top that's just opening and shutting its mouth. Yeah. Ma, 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 ma. <laughs> <laughs> that is an unpleasant noise when you don't have the visual to go with it. <laughs> it's probably unpleasant with the visual. <laughs> Actually, it was kind of entertaining. <laughs> So that's my ghost story. Right. Neat. I'm trying to think about whether or not I should make a spot that says, hey, if I find a quality EVP, I'll put it in here. But then I probably won't find a quality EVP. But will you find an ecto photo? I don't know. I don't even know what ecto... Is that like where you spill your ecto cooler on a pay- piece of paper and see what picture it makes? 
like a Rorschach test of Ecto Cooler. Yeah, do they sell make Ecto Coolers? I don't think they do. They are selling it at the movie theaters for Ghostbuster <laughs> Afterlife. What? Yes. Wow. Only there. Only there. My movie theater is outdated. It's they're not gonna give it to me. I don't think it's here. I think maybe it's only AMC theaters, but I don't know. I don't know. Our theater, like you can order tickets on site on their website, but um you're not actually gonna be able to retrieve them when you get to the theater, so it's not worth your time. <laughs> The assistant manager one time told me he didn't know why there was a self-service kiosk because it didn't work. <laughs> I'm like, that's, that's... And yet there's a vibrant sex trade. All right. Um, have you conceived a Hebrew drink? Yeah, sort of. Sacramental wine? Um, I, 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 I think I'm on brand. I think I'm on brand. It's okay. Manischewitz and Sprite. On <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I asked Sean. I was like, "Do you want to suggest a Jewish cocktail?" As you know, the Jew I keep in the house, and he was <laughs> like, "Manischewitz." I'm like, "That's not a cocktail." A citron circumcision. I don't know. Is that what like the homeless crowd also drink? Is that like what New York homeless drink instead of like uh, booms? Because I think the price point <laughs> is about the same. I don't and know. I don't and know. the quality, but uh, it's neither here nor there. I don't know what the East Coast homeless do. I spent so little time around. Mel, you lived in New York City. Uh, as far as I remember, I only had one interaction, and he was like this cool old black dude. And he was- I gave him the whole, like, take your hands off of me. And he was like, whoa, okay, whatever. And he t- lit about it. But he was like, I don't know, he's just cool dude. He wasn't like, you know begging and trying to be pathetic he was like, but he had his hands just, on you apparently well like it wasn't like a big deal i made a bigger deal out of it than i needed to because i really didn't know what to do or say i'm not so good at the interactions with other humans um but he was just like a jovial guy probably a little drunk he whatever. wasn't drinking what could have been manischewitz out of no. a paper bag Okay. No, and-, and that young man grew up to be little Nas X. <laughs> I'm Steve Harvey. No, not Steve Harvey. Who is the guy who does the the rest of the story with something Harvey? Not Steve Harvey, a different Harvey. Harvey Keitel? No. I don't know. I've ruined my own joke. Okay. Good, good there talk. was a weird lady that came up to me in a Chinese restaurant randomly and told me to beware the Sagittarius. <laughs> I don't Nick. know. If she, I don't think she was homeless, yeah, that's, but that's me. You realize, like, right? Like, yes, I I do know that. And I mean, I I'm a like, Sagittarius moon. How can you be a Sag? I don't understand it. How can you be a Sagittarius moon when you were born? Because your your moon. astrological your astrological sign is your sun yeah. sign. So your sun is in whatever your astrological oh. sign is, but the other planets are all over. Yeah, the and place. Like, my rising sign's a Gemini. You know, I. We can we can go over it. There's a lot. I had mine written down somewhere. I forget it. Yeah, I don't know any of that. But I know that you tell me all the time that I'm not really a fire sign. Um, I think I think I was once upon a time, but if you died, I've well. See, here's I, the thing: died. An, an Aries is a fire sign, but all your other shit could negate it's it. It's true. You've got enough yeah, of it backed up. Like thirty feet of poop. <sighs> thirty feet of poop. Is that the drink? Thirty. Feet. <laughs> No. No. A yard of poop? 30 feet is it's way more than a yard, Nick. Well, I know, but it's oh, a party sub of, a party sub of poop. I got a wish of my own armpit, and now I hate my life. <laughs> um, I am going to do a... So, I, I realize gin isn't really considered a Hebrew drink, but it's what we're rolling with. I'm going to do an apricot sour. Okay. That's, that's my plan of attack here. So, like, you know, I think I'm going to do a honey simple syrup. I couldn't find, like, a definitive answer on if honey is kosher. I believe if I use unadulterated, just regular honey, it's kosher. You don't have to kill kill anything for it, so I would assume it would be, but I don't know. Apparently there's mixed reports, because apparently... Okay. Uh, It may also be, like, how the the honey is collected, and, like, as long as nothing the honey touches previously touched animal products yeah. yeah seafood yeah well i can't go collect honey with my fish knife is what you're telling i mean you can but it won't be I kosher can't, i can't sell it as kosher yeah, yeah. so or you could just add a shitload of salt is the way that winnie the pooh collects honey kosher when he dresses up as a, a little black thundercloud 
Probably not because he's not wearing pants and I feel like dick in your honey is going to make it <laughs> unkosher. <laughs> well, and he eats the putty bees whole and has to spit them out. Yeah, I just, that seems unclean Wait, to me. what? Eat the honey With a W. Whole? With a W. Whole bees. Oh. <laughs> okay. Have you oh, never shit. seen Winnie the Pooh? He puts his whole well, fist have. in. And uh, then... there was a, maybe there was one I hadn't seen. I don't know. <laughs> it was a special edition. Got it in the back. Was it the, the porn edition? <laughs> <laughs> I think that would like ruin me. my life if there was a. There probably there, is a porn sure version of Winnie is. the Pooh, there but is. no, I saw I a, a meme where this guy's like, you know, four or five year old asked him where poo comes from, and it was an awkward conversation, <laughs> but he explained <laughs> it. And then afterwards, his son looked at him really confused and said, is that where Tigger's from, too? (laughs) (laughs) So, yeah, waiting for those conversations at my house. (laughs) What kind of poo do you mean exactly? Let's (laughs) clarify a little bit. He's not into Winnie the Pooh yet, so he's currently in love with uh, Minnie Mouse. Oh, okay. Tried to take her in the bathtub last night. Got really mad she couldn't come. <laughs> she does need a bath. He did cover her in macaroni and cheese because he feeds her. Mm-hmm. You just said he tried to take Minnie Mouse in the bathtub and was angry she didn't. <laughs> <laughs> she couldn't come. Oh, she couldn't come. Which happens. I like how he blamed that on her and not on his performance. <laughs> oh, he's a baby. You won't say that. <laughs> I didn't name the drink. Okay. Bath pool? Is that but a... I need one now. No. Jewish uh, bath water. Ew. Um, I'm really proud of us for not having to go into the Holocaust for this. The what now? What are you talking about? Dude, apparently like fewer and fewer people in America are believing in the Holocaust. Fewer and fewer people believe in lots of things because... Like reading. Because if it's not on social media, they don't have any frame of reference for it. What? Look at all these things that I can watch videos of. I can't watch a video of them. Well, I like, mean, there probably is more Holocaust denier videos on TikTok and Instagram than, like, Ken Burns documentaries, so. They only took so much footage of the Holocaust, you can keep making Holocaust denial yeah. videos. <laughs> I feel like there's-, there's lots of pictures of the Holocaust that are really, really telling. Good lord. I mean, I- You only I've, need to see a couple of them, and you're like, okay, I get it. Maybe can, it, yeah. maybe just everyone, like, under the age of 30 needs to just go to where- There's not a lot of Holocaust survivors left. We need to round them up. That sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Put them in a camp. No, just like- <laughs> Put them in cages so we can all visit- Take them to the Plaza city. Hotel. Like, have a day where everyone under the age of 30 can interact with a Holocaust survivor. <sighs> Boozeandspirits.com is the website. <laughs> we didn't name the drink. We'll figure it out. I know. I was trying to think of something and then we got talking about the Holocaust. Because Katie was so proud that we didn't bring it up, she decided to bring it up. I don't know. Make it something die bucky. But that has to do with wine, usually. It's uh, And, oh yeah, I, I didn't want to like interrupt you, but I believe the actual pronunciation is Dibbuk, but I don't. Maybe. That's just, that's how I've heard it in the past. Make it Dibbuky. Dibbuky. Dibbicky. Dibbicky. Dime store Dibbicky. Dime store Dibbicky. Wait, what was your Yiddish word for spirit? Oh, mine was uh, Rook. I think, well, I don't know how to pronounce it. R U E K H. There's a golem, too. Oh, yeah. There's a golem. The everlasting golem stomper. Golem stomper? Yeah. <laughs> it's not a golem stopper. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll be clever. As we do. We'll be clever. As we did. Just we'll be so clever. look up some ran- Look up the word random. Find out how to say it in Hebrew, and that's the name of the drink. I don't know that there or, is a... There's not a word for random in Hebrew? I'm sure there is. Find the word for apricot in Hebrew. Find the if word for... If I remember for... right, Hebrew is technically a dead language, so they're not adding words. That, I'm sure they... Akrai? Akrai? What if we just do... It's like... Oh, I should have put champagne in. That could have been like... Bubby's Bubbles. So everybody loves their Jewish grandmother. Just because I am one on the inside. A Bubba? A bubba. A booba. Bebba. Booba gibba. Bubba. Bubby is Yiddish for grandmother. Bubby. 
Well, isn't like, isn't Bubala Bubala. just a I general think, term of endearance? I think so. it might be a play on Endearment. on uh, on endearance on Bubby. Like you know, like nice. I've got it. Nice Latina grandmothers are uh, abuelitas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mean ones are abuelas. They're the ones that hit you with their shoes more often. Your drink is something to do with a shiksa. I am a shiksa. We're all shiksas. And every Jewish guy I've dated has had me cook him pork, even the kosher ones. Ah, pork and a shiksa. Beer and a shot. Smoking a pancake. That's right. A blintz and a bong. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have Trader Joe's blintzes in my freezer. Crepe and a cigar. All right. Moving right along. All right. Next episode. Christmas time is here again. Are we going to close out this one or just use the same audio to close out? No, we're, we're, this is the end yeah, of the we were, episode we're recording Nick, right Nick now. mentioned the website. Where we talk about the next episode. Oh, 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 oh. I thought we were segueing literally into the Christmas no. episode. No. Okay. Um, shh. Please continue. So the next episode will be our Christmas one. I, I don't think we're doing. Holidays. We're not, well, we're not leaning into the Victorian thing this year. I have noticed more um, of the ghost community leaning into the Victorian thing this year, yeah. though. What if, what if we call the drink the Shiksa Swill? Done. Done. Okay. Whatever. I'm into it. All right. So we're going to talk about some Christmas nonsense. We're going right. to make some poop shirts. They'll <laughs> save you from demon possessions, but only if it's a Hebrew demon. We uh, may or may not sprinkle burnt cat placenta all over each shirt. Like when they put Kiss's blood into the Kiss comic book. I mean, yeah, I got nothing. I got no. I have no cat placenta available to me. I have a lot of weird shits in my cabinet. We're going to look for cat placenta. You look out for the next episode. We're going to be doing Christmas. We're going to get crazy with it. We're going to get completely nonsensical. Uh, yeah. Yeah. The next episode will <laughs> probably be cat placenta free. But we cannot guarantee that. I make no that. promises. <laughs> I said probably. Boozeandspirits.com is a website. You can check us out on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Patreon. We don't spend a lot of time there, but if you contact us through it, we will answer you back. Unless you're asking us to be a, sp- a, sponsor, a spokesperson a- for a company that you don't appear to have any affiliation with. Yeah, this fake clothing line that you have nothing to do with, that you claim to invent. No, no, they just want you. They don't claim to invent it. They just want you to message well, them. Sure. You guys still doing the feet thing? I mean, if anyone will pay for the feed thing. I told Sean when my belly swells up, we got to take like some inappropriate pictures and I'll sell those to some high paying pervs because pervs love a pregnant bitch. They don't have to know it's just I'm swollen. They don't know that. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, that'll be the next plastic surgery craze. Like, you know, people getting the butt implants, they'll just get stomach implants so they look pregnant. Well, the BBLs are getting removed now. Apparently the Kardashians said they're over. Oh, just like that. Just like that. Uh, there, the theory is since you know the fashions from the late '90s, early 2000s are coming back. Is uh, heroin chic is, uh-huh. is coming back? They're going back to flat butts, huh? It's my time yeah, to go back shine, to flat guys. Butt for those it's my jeans. time to shine. Who will be the next Sir Mix a Lot to bring it back around? Well, it's going to be 15 years or so. I mean, he's still performing, so I guess it could be him. He could just you know have a resurgence because God bless him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, I feel like he made a new music video a few years ago. Probably. I feel like Matt Lamar was in it. I feel like... I think they filmed it out of dicks. I could go for a bag of dicks, right? Mm-hmm. I had a bag of dicks, not too long ago. I miss Dick. Seattle. I miss Seattle. Okay, bye! Right. That's not how the show ends. Oh, yeah. Don't forget Don't to drink everybody. responsibly and in accordance with your... Nope, that's not how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it? A coordinates? A coordinates, co- yeah, you know. That's the coordinates of your coordinates. Is, is that a word? For your geocaching. Yeah, that's where you geocache your accordion. Drink legally and responsibly. Please drink responsibly and in accordance with your local laws. Don't become our next ghost. Don't just end up. Don't end Bunch up our next ghost. Especially don't become a demon. Because we don't we only have so much capital center to go around. Yeah. <laughs>